Okay? And yesterday we created a summary table. And, that's, and that is all you need to know. Okay? That summary table is very good for yourself. Today we come to the last part. What happens if your kidneys fail? Notice every time we learn about systems, we always start with how it works, the parts, then we end up with what happens if it fails. So today is all about that. Today is all about scaring you. Okay? Kidney failure. Because one of the treatments of kidney failure is dialysis. I hope last week you got to see NKR, they brought down a dialysis machine. You saw that big white machine? No? I hope the next time you I hope you'll never get to see it. Okay? So the dialysis machine is for those of you that saw, for those of you that a bit not very tall, then it's around your height. Okay? For myself, when I stood beside the dialysis machine, it comes up to here. That big machine replaces the kidney that has failed. Okay? Uh, it's not an internal machine that you can hook up to, uh, it is external. Your blood needs to come out to go into the machine. Okay, so we're gonna learn about dialysis and kidney failure today. Let's start off first with a quick video um, to learn about one of the major causes of kidney failure. What is the cause? You'll be surprised. The cause of kidney failure is something that all of us here are uh, leading towards. Okay? Exercise. Um, I think this is a group of kids that need 
say rest of his life. That's the reality. Yeah. Um, very often, we hear the word diabetes thrown around. Um, I used to, I was like them, you know, I used to think that diabetes just means you have a lot of sugar in your blood. Like, how bad you have a lot of sugar in your blood be? Actually, if you think about it from a scientific point of view, we learn about water potentials, right? Right? So, water potentials are all affected by the amount of solutes in your blood. If you have too much of a certain solute, it can really mess up with a lot of these potentials. Other than that, high sugar levels often affect a lot of the functionality of cells. Cells often cannot function when your sugar levels are too high. We need some sugar to survive, but too much is for damage your cells. So, diabetes, uh, the classic symptom of it is that there is high sugar level where inside your blood. Um, one way to test is often through a blood test. So if you go for a health checkup, they may take a little bit of blood from you and you go and test the sugar level. Out of range means you have diabetes. Another symptom of some of diabetes is because there's so much sugar in your blood, you end up peeing up the sugar through your urine because your nephrons cannot be absorbed fast enough. But the real problem comes is when this high sugar level is prolonged for too long. When you prolong it for too long, cells start to die. And if the cells in your kidneys start to die, that's when you start to have kidney failure. Not just your kidney will fail. Lah. You heard earlier on heart problems, stroke, lots of different parts will start to die. But your kidneys, ah, if, if they are the first ones to go, it means that your body can no longer clean itself. It, it just accumulate lots of waste within the body. People who kidney not functioning, right, you will see that they are often feeling very groggy all the time. They feel very tired because there's so much waste coursing through their body. They cannot even store the useful stuff that you need to circulate it around. Okay, today we're going to spend a lot of time talking about kidney failure. Perhaps at the end of it, we go back to the source of it. How do we prevent diabetes? Okay, we're going to watch a little video on di dialysis later on. But I'd like to share a little bit about kidney failure. A little research I, I did on the site. Lah. Because it does mean quite a lot to me. I do have family members who have kidney failure. This is the real stats. And the, you know, in Singapore. In Singapore, ah, you know what's the worst thing? Singapore, per capita, we have the highest rate of diabetes. On this small little dot, eh, people in America, you know, it is Singapore, eh, and we have the highest rate of di uh, diabetes per capita. And perhaps if you look around us, uh, you can see why. You see, uh, actually Singaporeans are quite addicted to sugary drinks. Yeah? <laughs> why are you looking at each other? Okay? They're very addicted to sugary drinks. You just go to any mall, you don't just find one bubble tea shop, you find multiple bubble tea shops. Even for someone like me that don't drink bubble tea, you know what I drink? Every morning I have to go to Auntie Uncle and uh, Auntie there, the store, first store, and then I'll ask for my cup of tea. The British uh, that you came to when they drink tea, uh, they drink it just tea. Maybe they'll add plain milk. But for Singaporeans, we add lots of condensed milk, lots of sugar. I ask you to go and pay attention. Uh, have you ever seen how much sugar is added to a cup of tea or coffee? It is one heap of sugar. You go and observe again on uh, next side, often the spoon is like that. Uh, they don't just scoop like that, you know? You go and observe, it is always this much one, it's always overflowing. Always. Unless you are set to less sugar. You are set to less sugar, I observe, right? That's what they do. They make it flat. Okay, but it is still a lot of sugar. That's why you notice now Singapore, we have the rate, right? We create what is how much sugar can be uh, allowed within the, your drinks. Yeah? Have you noticed now? And it comes with A to D. Do you know that those that, those drinks that fall under D category, they are not allowed to advertise? Yeah? They are not allowed to advertise by print, in news, even on uh, TV, they are not allowed to advertise. I want to show you a very funny advertisement I came across recently. Super funny. Okay, you know what's Yakut? Yakut. Yeah, Yakut is a pre uh, probiotic drink. You know what's Vitagen? Also probiotic drink. These two companies are forever locked lock in with each other. They hate each other, they want to be each other. Because they're almost exactly the same drink. I saw this episode, super funny. Okay, yeah, cool. What's it, yeah, cool? It's my surgeon. Okay. 
Okay, you watch the context of it. Huh? Okay, so the context is this. As long as your sugar range is too high and falls into D category, you're not allowed to advertise. Okay, on TV also, on social media also. So this is Vitagen's advertisement. After this advertisement. <coughs> Sugar is a form, something that uh, humans and animals can get addicted to. Uh, it's been clinically proven you can get addicted to just a simple thing like sugar. Okay, so that is really the problem. And the issue here is that if you go to the supermarket now, you'll find that most drinks are in category C. Okay, very few are in A and B. I tried my best to find. Even now, I go to, oh yeah, I, I, I found those fruit juice when they say less sugar but the grade then still put C. So actually it's still high sugar. Uh, other than that, the only thing I managed to find that's in the A grade is, oh. yeah, just plain water. Oh. That's all I can find, you know. Everything else was in the grade of C and below. Okay? So you want to aim for A grades A and B. Uh, that's something that you're trying to do the government so that you can be more informed. Has it helped me as a person? Hey, I have to go there. Hey, I used to laugh and question about this grading, right? But now the moment I see that in my face and it's at the D or C region, also I just don't want to forget, I don't know why. Um, so aim for those also that come with a circle and with that pyramid you got see before. Healthier choice. Okay? So healthier choice of A and B will be something you want to aim for. Next, you notice there's one category of drinks that they do not break. Yeah, your Starbucks and your uh, bubble tea. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so very soon, Starbucks, bubble tea, all these drink stores, they need to also label. Okay? And I won't be surprised the moment they start labeling, you will see that most of it is in the D range. Okay? So you be very careful. Huh? Every five hours, yeah? In reality, your kidneys don't just shut down in one day, in a split second. They shut down progressively. For all we know, some of you already, part of your kidneys are dying already. Okay? How do, kidney, how do we categorize kidney failure is by how much of your nephrons are in. So, if we start from early to mid to late, really the difference between early and late is how many nephrons are left functioning. You have millions and millions of nephrons in each pyramid, but I suffice to say, the rate at which we drink sugary drinks, I'm not surprised that all of us here, some of our pyramids and some millions of nephrons are already gone. But can we stop it from progressing further? We can. But a lot of us don't. We let it continue and we start to feel the effects of it at the mid and late stage. Then how, uh, if all of us are already starting our early stage, what can we do? Okay, I think the first thing is you need to find out you're in the early stage. How do you find out? Okay, that's why you must go for a regular health checkup. Usually, we make the assumption that someone young like your age will not have diabetes. You know why we make the assumption? Because while you're still young, your metabolic rate is still high and you are still exercising, going for PE lessons. The assumption here is that your body is still using up the glucose that you eat. But for someone like my age, you know, I don't go for PE lesson, 
I have to go for regular health checkup. I need to check whether the blood sugar levels are too high. Yes. So if we consume less sugar, we have more energy. If you consume less sugar, you have more so energy. Have more energy because like less toxins. Then you're not doing it. Oh no, so so it is really a fine balance. You need to consume enough sugar so that you have energy to do your daily stuff, but not too much of it. Yeah. Those that consume too little, you'll be very tired. But those that consume enough, just right. But if you consume too much, you can go into kidney failure and uh, diabetes first and kidney failure. Yes. Okay, so that's why uh, you hear this now, they say exercise. I know we hate to do this, but this is necessary so that we can use up the sugar. If you know you're the kind of person that takes a lot of sugary drinks, then you want to exercise. Number two, which they often say is a healthy diet. But what in the world does a healthy diet mean? It doesn't mean you cannot take a bubble tea anymore. Okay, it means this, uh, don't drink so much of these sugary drinks. And if you really are someone that likes to drink sugary drinks, now for what grade is that? Wait, look. It has no grade. You sure? Yeah. Okay, you put a healthier choice, is it? Yeah. Okay, that means it's still quite good. Okay, so uh, what does a healthy diet mean for you? It means that don't drink so much of those drinks. Maybe one cup of this after that. However, one other way you can go about doing this, right, is thinking about what kind of sugars you take. There are some foods that release sugars very slowly. Okay, so uh, you want to eat foods that contain something called complex carbohydrates. As compared to those that have simple sugars. We learned this before in J3. Yeah? Remember your glucose can form carbohydrates, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the issue with all your sugary drinks is that they put a lot of these simple sugars. You know what that means? The moment it enters your stomach, you immediately absorb it already. No need to digest. It immediately goes into your blood. But if you were to take foods with complex carbohydrates, there's actually one more step your body needs to do, which is to digest it. So actually, if you want to take sugar, if you need energy, rather than going straight to simple sugars, go instead to carbohydrates. Because carbohydrates take time to digest. And you know what? If you do not digest it fast enough, the excess gets shit out. Right? But if you digest it, if there's no digestion at all, you absorb everything. So for example, why not eat things like fruits? In your fruits, there's a mixture of simple sugars, there's a mixture of complex carbohydrates, and you digest these com uh, complex carbohydrates a bit slower, you release the sugars slower also. That way you get your satisfaction of eating something sweet, but at the same time, you do not consume too much sugar. Another thing uh, is the choice of your carbohydrates. Some foods, for example, you know government is pushing people to eat uh, brown rice, Because uh, the difference between brown rice and white rice is one key difference. White rice is polished rice. That means they've removed an outer coating. If you eat brown rice, there's actually still an outer coating. And that outer coating actually is quite hard to digest. So actually when you eat uh, brown rice, your body needs more time to digest this outer coating before it actually reaches the starchy part in the inside that contains a lot of sugars also once you digest it. So brown rice, you can get full, but it takes longer to digest. You may end up shitting out more of it, but you don't take up as much of the simple sugars once it's digested. White rice, once you eat it, it's very easy to digest. There's no protective outer coating. So that's why the government is pushing people to go for this. And if you cannot let go of white rice, then you mix it up. Mix it up. Um, so, for those of you that don't exercise much, I think the other way is to go for a healthy diet. Okay? Um, what are some unhealthy stuff? Yes? Is diabetes the only condition that leads to kidney failure? It's not the only, but it's the main cause. Yeah, it is the main cause. It's a, yeah. Yes? Is it feeling full like a mental thing or like actually a thing? Like as long as you're taking your nutrients and sugars, Oh. Okay. 
um, hunger is a result of emptiness in your stomach. So, how yeah is right. If I can hook you up via tubes and supply you with nutrients, right? Possible for you to feel hungry? Possible. Your stomach is empty, but you have all the nutrients you need. You won't die of uh, in theory, yes, but in practice, you have no tube, external source, right? And so hunger is a good measure of whether you have enough, whether you are eating enough food. Yeah. Okay. But you can you can trick yourself to be full, but at least you are full, not with lots of sugar. Yeah. Yes. Okay. How does high sugar level result in kidney failure? I've tried to research in depth. Scientists are still figuring out the full mechanism of it. But they realize that one of the causes is that when there's too much sugar, as the body is trying to metabolize the sugar, lots of toxins are released and it can kill the cells. I think one of the easier ways to understand how sugar can affect your cells is in terms of water potential also. Let's say if we have a lot of sugary solution around our cell, what will happen in water potential wise? Water will leave the cells. Right? So that is the simplest way to understand it. But that is not the main cause of the cell death also. The main cause of cell death, scientists are still trying to figure out. We, we are not exactly fully sure. Okay, so healthy diet. Am I having a healthy diet? Okay, I've got to admit, I, not really. Um, I have to admit, I don't know if you are like me, but when it comes to a long tiring day, you know, I want my comfort food. And all of the comfort food, right, are sugary. Okay, so what are some of the comfort food I like? I tell you, uh, I really, really like to have a cup of teh. Te. You know, the one with like tea and then they put milk, condensed milk with sugar, and they still put one heap of sugar. Now I ask for teh C. But to be honest, very honest, right, it's not enough. So now I go for teh C, then you add one more word called siu tai. Siu tai means less sugar. When I ask for less sugar, all you see, right, is that one, like, full spoon but not overflowing spoon. It's still too much sugar to be very honest because I don't really exercise. Yeah? But for all of you, start young because once the damage is done, you cannot reverse it. Uh, I don't know which stage I'm at. Uh, okay? But I went for recent blood tests and it's not high sugar level. I don't, I'm not in the diabetes range. Okay, so I'm still okay. But my family members, a lot of them are in a high, high close diabetes range really. So I need to be very careful. I'm going to show you a video of what dialysis looks like as an experience. Okay? So that you yourself don't want to be a part of it. This is something in America, uh, but the machines are largely the same. But I'm showing you this video because I think this particular video does showcase the, the pains of it. It's like an artificial kidney in a sense. It acts and does the things that my kid no longer does. Our kid, you don't urinate the same, your body is not as squeaky. The toxins that are in it, so once the kid starts failing, you need this to live. I know it. I come to dialysis after that. Yeah. Things I 
ask questions or find out. I have them explain everything to me because I want to know what's going on. But the houses patient has to help themselves too. When they give you your labs back, you should check once a month. And they show you what's high, what's low, what you need to do, you gotta get this down. You gotta take care of that. And you realize you still have a chance to straighten things out and still have a pretty good life. And you start realizing how important life really is. You gotta do something. I think the, this video is trying to frame things as quite hopeful, yes? Uh, if you get a kidney transplant, like a replacement kidney, no more dialysis either. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question, which is the next part I want to talk about. If your kidneys fail, there are actually two solutions to this. The first solution is dialysis. The next solution is a transplant. We'll talk a little bit about transplants in a while. Why don't we just all do transplants? Donate your kidney or not? Yeah. You would? Okay. Now each person has two kidneys. Uh, it is a myth uh, to think, okay, but you can function with one kidney. But actually, with one kidney, you have to regulate your health a lot more. You have to really control what you eat because one kidney uh, is doing the job of two kidneys now. Right? So actually, people with one kidney, although they can survive, they are surviving in a precarious way. Um, they do so yeah, they have to take very good care of their health. Cannot afford to fail, we only have one more. Okay. Uh, in this next part of the lesson, I'm going to share with you a little bit about how the machine works. So you understand how it's trying to mimic our kidneys. Okay? Look at the machine here. There are a few features. Number one, the reality is that we cannot insert a machine in you to do the filtering. Instead, we take the blood out. Okay? Blood is drawn out from your vein goes through a pump, then goes into the dialysis machine that has a lot and a lot of tubes that's trying to mimic your nephrons. Because it is at your nephrons where we try to take out the waste, right? Yeah, so it's trying to mimic that here. Then the blood will be sent back into your, into your system. But right, just taking it out once is not enough. You need to sit there for around four hours to let the blood go through this machine many, 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 many times within four hours, until it is clean. Because this machine is not as efficient as your two kidneys. Okay, let's talk about how this machine works so that you understand the mechanics of it. We are really trying our best to mimic the kidney, but we just cannot, we do not have a way to do it. So it's very amazing what your kidneys can do. Number one, this machine, you will see it comes with a pump. It's not just not a system going around and around, spinning. There's a pump in the machine that helps to draw blood out. Because if you think about it, if you suddenly draw blood out to a machine, right, actually your blood pressure will lower. You say so you're losing a lot of blood. So this machine helps you have a pump to help to maintain the pressure so that you don't feel faint when the blood is leaving you. Okay? That's the first feature. What is it trying to mimic? Actually, it's trying to mimic the heart. It's trying to maintain the hydrostatic pressure so that blood still flows. It's also trying to create the effect where the apron and apron are arterial different size and then there's pressure coming out, right? That's what the pump is trying to do. The pump is trying to maintain the hydrostatic pressure. First feature of the machine. Second feature of the machine. All the tubes of the machine inside, they are also partially permeable. This is to allow waste products to leave the, the tubes. As your blood that's entering the machine contains a lot of waste products, it will leave the tubes into the surrounding fluid. You see that we are supplying it with this thing called dialyzing fluid solution. Yeah, all your waste products will exit the tubes into this solution, and then it will come out through another uh, bottle, and that is where all your waste products will be. What is this trying to mimic? It's trying to mimic your filtration barriers. Yeah? While we have the renal corpuscles, that's where the filtration barriers are, this machine does not have any renal corpuscles. Instead, it only has tubes that has microscopic holes. A little bit like your fenestrations. It is there that all the waste products are exiting. Next feature, the tubes inside the machine are very, very long and very narrow. Uh, who went to the machine last week? Only one person. Okay, I pray for y'all, y'all don't get diabetes. 
I will ask them to come back again at the end of the year. Then you make sure you go and find them. Okay? Uh, this time round, the kidney dialysis patients, uh, the person was not very well, so he didn't come down. But actually, normally, you will not see NKF staff there. It will be the patients themselves coming down to explain to you how the machine works, where it's being inserted and everything. Okay? Uh, this, if for those that went, you, was, you have seen, right, they dissected the machine and show you a lot of fibers. Those tubes are where the blood will pump through. It is long and narrow to increase the face area, as you can imagine. And it's trying to mimic your nephrons. Your nephrons are highly coiled, right? The convoluted part is very coiled, and then they are very long regions. We are trying to mimic that to increase the face area. Other than that, as I mentioned earlier on, there is this fluid, this solution, that is being supplied to the machine. That is what will collect all your waste products. Interesting thing is, the fluid that is going to the machine, it will have a very similar composition as your blood plasma. Why do you think so? Why must the fluid going into the machine have the same composition as what is in your blood? Okay, actually, on the correct track. So that uh, we make sure all the useful stuff will come out. All the glucose in your blood, amino acids, we don't want it to diffuse out, right? So the best way we can do that is to make sure that the concentration gradient is non-existent. If the solution has the same concentration of glucose and amino acids as your blood, then nothing will leave. So that is a, the science that we are applying here. Okay? But we make sure that there is no waste product inside the solution. Because if it's zero concentration of waste, that means all the waste in your blood will want to come out. Fire simple diffusion. Okay? And that is the process that we are using here. One last feature I want you to observe. Notice that the blood that is being drawn out into the machine is flowing in the opposite direction as the solution that is going in. This is actually a very important feature. We need to make sure that the clean solution and your blood with a lot of waste is going in the opposite direction. And I want to show you why. Look over here. Here I have the clean fluid going in. You see all this stick, right? This stick means it's clean fluid going in. Then we have the, your blood with the waste going in the opposite direction. You see that the waste is the yellow crosses. Because these two fluids are flowing in the opposite direction, we help to always maintain a concentration gradient. Can you imagine if the fluids flow the same way? If it flows the same way, uh, once the waste enters the fluid, it will travel in the same direction as the fluid with waste, your blood with waste, right? No more waste will start to exit. But if it flows in opposite directions, you will find that there will always be clean fluid coming in, and there will always be a high concentration of waste wanting to travel here. So it's very important it goes in opposite direction. Then we maximize the diffusion process. Those are the broad features of all the parts of your kidney. Sorry, the dialysis machine. And the worst part of it all is we try so hard to create this machine to clean your blood, but it's not good enough. Because if we compare your dialysis machine and the kidney, it's far from doing the job that your kidney does. You, if you were to get like a kidney failure, you need to go to the center three times a week and sit there four hours. Okay? Whereas your kidneys, 24 7 is constantly cleaning. And you know what's the amazing part? Your kidneys filter 10,000 liters of blood per week. If you were to go three times a week, four hours with the machine, you want to make a guess how much blood is filtered? Okay, yeah? Uh, 1,000? Anyone else? Any other numbers? What? 5,000. Okay, 10,000 liters up uh, versus the machine 3 times a week, 4 hours, just 300 liters. Okay, you see the issue here? It means to say uh, that even though you sit there 3 times a week, 4 hours, 300 liters, right? You would never match up to your healthy kidneys 10,000 liters. Therefore, as much as it's removing metabolic waste, it's removing just enough so that you can survive. But I don't think you'll ever feel as healthy and as great as having two healthy kidneys. 
I was very shocked when I see the difference. It's not a matter of this is still in the thousand range, it's 300 meters compared to 10,000 meters. Okay? If we compare the two, you realize that the kidney does so much more. You look at your dialysis machine, huh? it can only do two things. One, remove waste products and excess fluid. Number two, help to regulate the electrolytes, means all the salts. But you look at what your kidneys can do. Other than removing waste, it actually regulates. Help you carry out homeostasis. Remember yesterday, we can regulate how much water you want to reabsorb? The dialysis machine cannot do that once your kidneys fail. Your kidneys also release a lot of hormones to help to carry out homeostasis. Lots and lots of hormones. Your kidneys also can produce vitamin D to keep your bones strong. But without that, you cannot do that. Look at what the dialysis machine can do, what your kidneys can do. And your dialysis machine only solves two issues. It doesn't help you with the hormones. It doesn't help you with vitamin D. It doesn't help you with homeostasis. You are on your own. So, earlier on, you are asking, why not we just do transplants then? Okay, the reality is that we have limited supply of organs. Yeah? And let's say we did have enough organs, one for everyone. The next problem is compatibility. I cannot just, if I want to, uh, I'll find you in trouble, I just give my kidney to you. We have to make sure that our blood types match. Right? Do our blood types match? We, we, all, we all know the size between blood typing, right? Yeah? We need a lot of O donors, therefore, people with O. But the reality is, we already have struggled to get people to donate blood. We want people to donate kidneys uh, that, is of the, that can match, right? It's not going to be very easy. Um, and because of that, the Singapore government uh, foresaw that people don't just want to donate their organs, right? So actually, we have this uh, Human Organ Transplant Act. All of you here, once you reach a certain age, I can't remember what the age is, could be 18. Once you hit that age, you automatically are part of this act, Singaporeans and PRs. What this means is that if you were to get into an accident, you die, or you are brain dead, all your organs, if they are still in good condition, automatically will be part of this pool that people can uh, get organs from. Okay? Um, this is Automatically, you'll be part of it. It's on an opt-out basis. So when I hit the correct age, I received a letter asking me if I want to opt-out. And I did not opt-out. Lah. After all, if I'm gone already, mentally not there, if I'm dead, right? And if my organs are still good, why not go to someone else? Yeah, Because I'm not going to use them anymore. I'm already at another place. Okay. So we do have this as a safety net, but it's not a good one because the waiting list is very long. And I can attest to that because I have an uncle who was on a waiting list. Both his kidneys failed already. Yeah? And he was on the waiting list for quite long. He managed to get one kidney uh, donation. Managed to swap it out. And actually, it's not as beautiful as it sounds. Because even if your blood is compatible, your body will still think that this kidney is a foreign invading virus or bacteria. Constantly, he had to take immune suppressants medicines that suppress your immune system so that the body doesn't start to digest the own kidney that's been donated. So a person with donated transplanted organs, kidney or not, uh, they often have to take medicines to suppress the immune system. Um, his kidney, that donated kidney, has failed also. Because as I said, one kidney is really not that good. Uh. Okay, that kidney has failed also. Yes. Um, I am not very sure how long. Uh, I just knew that he suffered for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, usually the wait is around three to five years. Back. Yeah. Uh, but now that his donated kidney has failed, um, you know, because the wait list are uh, as a criteria one. We're not going to give someone a kidney if the person, for example, doesn't have a good prognosis. Then he doesn't. It's not going to survive very long to begin with. It is it's really like an ethical issue, uh. If you, have a, if you have limited survival of kidneys and you have a young child and then you have a person who is quite old, who will you give the kidney to? This is the ethical kind of decision that has to be made. Uh, but because he's received the kidney once before, it's not going to get to have another one. Yeah? That kidney will go to someone else that has not had a chance before. So now, uh, I observe 
his, his health is stress going down purely. He goes for dialysis constantly. Um, at his age, while it is still important, it is not helping a lot for him. Uh, recently, he had to be hospitalized for a very, very long period of time because too much toxins in his blood. People that go for kidney dialysis, uh, actually because they have to, can you imagine you have to insert a tube into your vein so often? Yeah? After a while, uh, when you insert so many times, the vein will start to develop a thick layer of tissue to, as a scar. Right? So it's very hard to cope. So people that go for frequent dialysis, you know that they have a permanent tube that has been uh, inserted into them. When they go for dialysis, they open the tube and then they put the dialysis machine tube there. So there's a permanent tube there. You will, I, I see my uncle, there's a cake over here with two tubes. So constantly there, uh, very painful to have it there. Infections also can occur because it's a constantly open wound. Constantly your immune system is trying to catch up that area with, with you know, we last year we learned all the blood clotting me mechanisms, constantly trying to do that. Okay. And even if we talk about human organ transplant, right, as simple as it, it sounds, how would your relatives feel about having your organs down with other people? Yeah? Uh, this image was in the news. This is my grand auntie. Uh, my grand auntie, her son, was my father's best friend. They did everything together. Uh, but one day at the age of 27, he came home with a headache. Uh, my, my father asked him if it was okay, he said it's just a headache. He went to sleep. Next morning, my father lost his best friend and his um, cousin. Uh, don't know what happened that night, but he actually had a brain hemorrhage. So, his brain died, but all his organs were still okay. Uh, my grand aunt was one of the first in Singapore to make the decision that it's okay, uh, we'll donate all the organs away. So, four organs, if I'm not wrong, the kidneys, the liver, the heart, all went to different, different people. Uh, although she lost her son, she you know, in some ways felt like she gained four children. Um, some of these people do visit her um, to ask her how she is. Uh, and in some way, she feels like her son lives on. The heart of her son is now in another person. The liver, the kidney is for other people too. I'm not trying to romanticize this, but this is a reality. Not everyone may feel this way. Some people will feel very hurt. This reminder that their child is no longer here, but it's in scattered here and there everywhere. Yeah? But it's also a decision for you to make. Where do you want your organs to go if you were to untimely divide? Yeah? Because it could really save the lives of many people. But for a start, as young people here, let's prevent ourselves from getting diabetes. Because once you get that, um, the next step uh, will be that your neck will start to die and your kidneys will start to fail. You don't want to be in this state. Yeah? I hope I've inspired or scared you enough. Because I really don't want any of us to be that sick. Yes. Okay, good question. Because kidney is very important for producing urine, right? So you'll find right people with kidney failure, their urine production right, is not very good. Really, urine peeing right is a problem because not much urine is produced. Because your you cannot produce urine anymore. Yeah, so that is an issue. Okay? Um the next time I see you next week, we can address some of your burning questions. But I will try to mark your term 2 review uh, in time so that we can go through. Alright, then we'll go through your questions as well as address some questions from this chapter. All the burning questions you have, we have related to your health, maybe not even related to uh, the chapter, but related to your health, also have to answer. I'm not a doctor, but I've tried to read up a lot so that I can share information with you. Okay? Okay, that's all for today. Now is back. Can we, can we stop the video? I not much memory space. Oh, sure. Thank you.